the northern half of Sabi Sand had become a hotspot, kicking off 2024. Especially the movements of rival coalitions led to confrontation which came to no surprise. The two black dam males who seemed to have taken over the lionesses from the Nkuma pride surprisingly left their territory by the end of December and moved to the west. We only can speculate what triggered them to leave, but the most likely explanation are the Fokambula males who had challenged them for territory over the last couple of weeks. However, their visit to Singita didn't last very long. Mid-January they were seen on a kill with the Kambula males, who most likely relieved them of their prize. This all took place in Plains Camp territory, who were not happy at all about the uninvited guests. Until January 20, the Black Dam males were hiding out in Londolosi, licking their wounds and figuring out their next move. And lo and behold, two days later they were back in Juma, having linked up with the Nkuma pride, followed by announcing their presence as if nothing has happened. It seemed that the two brothers had realized that only one of the Kambulas meant business. Despite of having the upper hand in numbers, his brothers were happy the way it is. White Shayla and the four-year-old Avoka daughters were seen numerous times mating with both coalitions the corporates seemed to have accepted the Black Dam males. And up until recently, the two brothers looked quite content. On February 1st, they followed the Nkuma pride into Malamala, and that's when the two males ended up in a fight. According to ranger reports, they allegedly clashed with the Nzenga, and the older brother, who got beaten up quite badly, ended up in Juma. He was seen yesterday on Wild Earth with bite marks and deep scratches on his body and he carried a bad limp. The other brother was licking his wounds south of Juma and his injuries are not known to the full extent. This morning reports came out that both of the males were on Hoffman's, so at least it would be a good thing if they indeed had reunited during the night. The big question mark right now is what will become of them? First and foremost, will they fully recover? And secondly, since the fight took place on enemy's turf, will they stay in the north or will they leave? The Kambulas can be ruled out as being involved in this fight. This picture was taken yesterday on Londolosi. There were no signs of injuries and no sign of their brother who was the one who was being highly motivated to mate with the Nkuma and did so in the last couple of weeks. So far, the other three males are hesitant to take a more aggressive approach. But this may change when they sense a vulnerability in the Black Dam Brotherhood. Not to forget this male who was entering numerous times from the north. It's the Kruger male who took over the Imbali pride, but right now his intentions are not clear yet. All the while the four young Kuma males and their father have left Savisand and moved deep into Kruger. Last updates showed them far in the south, near Skukusa, which is the core territory of the Nkula males. The Talamati Breakaway Pride is still hanging in there. The Sapadals, who were looking in bad condition at the beginning of this year, enjoyed a number of good meals. However, they are still in danger when they come across other lines. Mid-January, the female Sapadalt had a wound on her back. And two weeks later, the young male had been mauled to a point that left a deep puncture wound near his spine. Luckily, these injuries were not life-threatening, and thanks to a number of kills, the overall condition has improved significantly. 
At the end of the month, the pride moved into the western sector, and hopefully there they can stay out of harm's way. On a positive note, rangers did something they rarely do. They named the Silati daughter who took the subadults under her wing, Tieleli, which means resilient. She lost her mother, her sister, the pride male and three of the cubs all in a matter of seven months. And whether she is the mother or aunt of the two remaining subadults, it doesn't matter, she adopted them. In the latter part of October, she herself suffered a life-threatening situation when she got caught in a snare. She bounced back despite all the heavy losses she had to endure. And rightfully so, she had been given a proper name. And in addition to that, it makes her the new Telemati queen. The friendship between the Inkahuma male and the Skoro breakaway male may have come to a pause. At the beginning of January, the Inkahuma male was back in Okumba, while the Skoro breakaway male roamed Londolosi all by himself. We don't know what made them split in the first place, but one reason could be the Nzenga male, who was seen chasing the Skoro male on January the 7th. Since then, the Skoro breakaway male was seen in Nkoro, way out of his territory, and by end of January, the Nkuma male was back in the west. In the meantime, the Tsilala lioness, who had mated at least with the Skoro male on multiple occasions, had been also trailed by the Plains Camp males, who come to Londolosi from time to time to stake their claim in the north. This part of the land had been previously occupied by the Skoro breakaway male and the Nkuma male, so they too could be very well the reason why the pair broke up in the first place. Their mission to get rid of all the other males made them aware of the Talala lioness. In mid-January they were seen mating with her. If she were to have cubs, the Plainscape males are definitely the safest choice she can make provided they are going to protect her in the small territory she had inherited from her mother. They too were quite busy last month. On January 10, they chased the Kumbula males all the way back to Elephant Plains and satisfied with their victory, they returned the next day to the west. Not to forget the Black Dam males they also had to deal with. They carry a lot of responsibility for the 10 cubs of the Mangeni pride as well as the Shimuva pride, who have been thriving under their protection. The only concerning thing is that the older Shimuva lioness, who had lost her cub by the end of November, doesn't seem to be ready to mate. And furthermore, she suffered an injury while hunting on her right flank. However, if she keeps her wound clean, there shouldn't be a reason to prevent her from full recovery. One of the Ottawa lioness has also suffered a hunting accident. But according to rangers, she moves without handicap. The two girls are thriving and their future looks bright. From time to time, they get a visit from their father, who also noticed that his daughters are approaching adulthood fast. The same can be said for the subadults of the Nkuma Linus Rich Nose. Despite being nine months younger than the Ottawas, they look impressive for their age, which is a testament to their mother's dedication and care. In the next couple of months, she might go back into Eastris, and if she were to have a new litter, she may count on the support of her daughter not raising another litter as a single mum. The oldest cubs of the Kambula pride just celebrated their first birthday and despite signs of mange, the three youngest are doing okay. However, the newest editions of the Kambula pride belong to the split group and were born by the end of November. 
The mother of the cubs is the lioness K3, who lost her litter, born in April. She went back into estrus in August, and whether she knows or not, one of her cubs is still alive and roams with the core pride. Chances are that K2 had also given birth, but her cubs haven't been revealed yet. And there's also a chance that her cubs didn't make it. Even though they have split from the core group, the fathers of the cubs are the Nzenga, and the new additions enjoy the same protection as their older cousins. Ranger reports indicate that they divide their time between the two groups. But the Nzenga also showed unusual movements this month. On January 11, they left their territory and came to Elephant Plains for the first time as far as I know. The reason for that move keeps us guessing. Maybe they came to investigate the commotion that took place the day before, when the Plains Camp males chased the Kambulas out of their territory. The high density of May lines all over Sabi Sand demands extra caution from any coalition who holds the territory. Further south, things seem to have calmed down at least a little. The Kijimas cemented their bond with the Talamati pride, when at least two of the lionesses have given birth. However, the baby boom also led to territorial conflict and luckily this time without any casualties. Involved in the skirmish is a Styx lioness, a Talamati lioness and a Gijima male. The Talamati lioness, who is one of the mothers, tries to lure the mating pair away from her den, in which she succeeded. On the other hand, the Styx lioness mating again sadly proved that she had lost her cubs. But nevertheless, the Styx pride is thriving, and the oldest subadults turn three years in March. When all of them survive and become sexually mature, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. More good news come from the Southern Pride when Sabi Sabi reported that at least one of the young lionesses has also given birth. While we eagerly await the first sighting of the new additions, the older cubs who are shy of their first birthday are thriving. With the Gijima males now having more prides and more cubs to protect, let's hope they divide their attention evenly in their growing territory. Their rivals, the Nkulu males, are roaming between Kruger and southern Sabi Sand. One of the Nkulu males and the Delaporte male, who have been seen in dire condition by the end of last year, have teamed up by mid-January. However, they parted ways again, and this picture of the Delaporte male had been taken around two weeks ago. From the looks of it, his condition had slightly improved, although he had lost a lot of mane, which is often a sign of stress. There are no recent pictures of the youngest Inkulu male since he parted ways with dreadlocks. So let's hope he is doing okay. The other two males, who also gave reason for concern, looked better compared to the last update, which also goes to show the resilience of these magnificent animals. The same can be said for the southern Avoca male who doesn't give up either. Fresh battle scars on his face is a testament to his resilience and determination to survive the harsh reality of an aging nomadic male. As far as the St. River Pride goes, there are no recent updates of them. But if the mating bears fruit, we should see a new generation of Nkulu cups soon. The last update concerns the Talamati males who left Sabi Sand and moved into Kruger. The last time they were seen together was in December on Sabi Sabi. Since then, only the younger of the two males had been seen alone in Kruger. 
Kruger sightings are sometimes more difficult to track. And considering that the two brothers spent a good amount of time in the last year apart from each other, we shouldn't be overly concerned yet. The only thing is, Kruger is vast and they both are not familiar with the territory, so let's hope they find each other soon. <laughs>